Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Team of Talk. I'm your host Carl Gibbons and welcome to everybody. We hope you're all safe, sound and cocooning and not driving everybody crazy at the moment and have not committed too many murders. I know my wife has uh, threatened to uh, do unspeakable things a couple of times, but we just want you all to be, to be safe and to be sound so we can get this pandemic behind us, out the way, and we can all return to normal, whatever that means in the future, which is, of course, some of the things that we've been talking about over the last few episodes. Now, we've had several guests on the show over the last uh, few episodes, and that have all been stateside. And this is a global pandemic. It's affecting, there's nobody on this planet that's not touched. So I thought it might be a good idea if we got a different perspective and how it's affecting people. So joining us today is Stephen Cliff. Uh, Stephen is uh, from Sandringham Financial Partners and SC Wills and Estate Planning. Uh, he's been a financial advisor for over 20 years and this year has been voted one of the UK's top rated advisors. So congratulations to that. And Stephen, welcome. Yeah, welcome, Carl. Nice to see you over the pond. Yeah, and absolutely. Hope things are uh, going okay there. Yeah, all good. All good. Now, before we get into what we're all here about, just for our listeners, I want to put I want to put your location. I mean, everybody knows that you're in the UK, but I just want to put your location into a, a, a bit of context. Uh, you live in Paynton in Devon, which for, for our listeners and viewers is four hours southwest of London. It's a resort seaside town on the coast of Torbay in Devon, England. And uh, together with Torbay and Brixham, it forms the borough, or as we would say in the United States, the county of Torbay. Uh, the Torbay area, as I said earlier on, is a, a vacation destination and is also known as the English Riviera. And the population in the UK is about 50,000. Uh, so that's put it a little bit of where Stephen's coming from, uh, literally and physically. So Stephen, let's get right down to it. What's been the UK government's reaction to coronavirus? They've been very supportive, actually, and I think it's, very, it's taken a very sort of scientific, pragmatic approach to it. Um, uh, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and he's, uh, he's, he's listened to specialists, scientists, medical advisors, and he seems to be, you know, using them to, you know, guide him, really. So we've had, um, we're in lockdown now, so same as you, I'm sure, and we're stuck in our houses, can go out for certain reasons, but that's all. Um, but what what is done gradually? We had to have uh, see less clients. Certain places had to close. Then um, uh, schools closed, uh, and they sort of shut things down slowly. And sort of we come to it now. We're all in lock-in. No children at school. No one going to work. Nothing. So so the whole of the UK is literally on lockdown. Now, over here, it's yes. been done on a state by state. So, for example, the state of Florida, where I'm talking to you from, as you know, uh, we're not in lockdown. Every, the, the governor has suggested that we all stay at home and all public buildings, restaurants, pubs, clubs, etc., anywhere where communities gather, um, they're all on closed down. But he hasn't actually said everybody, if you like, by government mandate uh, has got to stay at home. But... That's what the UK government has done for you guys, right? Yeah. So the police are driving around and dispersing, you know, groups of uh, teenagers, pensioners, whoever they are, and saying, look, you know, you've got to stay in your family groups. You've got to stay two metres away from each other. Uh, you're allowed to go out for exercise once a day. You're allowed to go out shopping for essentials. And you're allowed to go out if it's a medical emergency or if you're caring for someone. And that's it. So okay. nothing. We're home based, and we can't really go out. You know. Okay. And that's the whole UK. Right. Okay. So, how's it, clearly it's having a huge effect on business, right? We, we it's no point in in, in minimising it. It's having a huge effect. Um, how's it affecting you? Personally, and and my uh, job, if you like, as a financial advisor. I work from a desk and I'm here at my desk, a desk. I've got my printer and my computer and my paperwork and things. So I'm not like a shop or a hotel or a restaurant or a bar that's literally been shut, you know, and closed down. So I'm still talking to clients on the phone. And I'm still emailing all day. and I've still got a big pile of work to do here. So 
personally, it's not affected me and my business so much. Um, obviously, I've got um, clients with uh, investments and pensions, and um, uh, you know, it's affected them in that their fund has gone down. You know, perhaps twelve percent, perhaps twenty percent. So they're concerned about that. So it's sort of my job now to reassure people and and show a bit of you know uh, compassion and let's stay positive and get through this type of thing. Right. So yeah, that's what's happened really with my my business. Now, Tor Bay, as I said in the opening, it's a, a vacation destination. I've been there many times. Um, it must be devastating because I mean you're coming into we're fast approaching Easter. Easter kicks off the no, season, right? No, it's the Easter holidays now. Oh, okay. So, so, on, so Friday afternoon, there would have been, you know, a, 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 a two-hour tailback to get into Tor Bay. Everyone coming on holiday. Yeah, been uh, there, done the that. First, <laughs> yeah, for the first major holiday of the year, and the, the, like you say, the hoteliers quite often close all winter. Uh, the shopkeepers, the cafes, the restaurants, quite a lot close in the winter. And the first time, really, they have a chance to earn some money go through the winter with no money at all is right. Easter and we're on total lockdown. So they're not going to get any income from their business now and they get enough money in the next two weeks to get them through to the summer, which probably starts June time, you know, goes through to August. They've got to make enough money during that time to get themselves all the way through the winter. And now they've got no income whatsoever. So right. it's devastating really. Is optimism high that everybody will be back on track by the summer? Or is everybody just in that, uh, I, haven't got a clue? I think, I think in the early days, which was only a few days ago, really, I think it took, um, it was a massive shock to people, I think. And I, I was, you know, on Facebook and things, and there's a lady there who just said, I spent five years building up my business uh, for it to all disappear, you know, overnight. And I think that's perhaps people's initial reaction that, you know, the end of the world has come. But I think hopefully now, over the next few weeks, people will you know, start to realise that there is government support there. It's not the end of the world. Hopefully, it will, you know, we're back to normal sooner rather than later. You know, uh, sooner it would help. Um, but I think it's just getting through the next few months for them financially uh, before the government support starts to come through. OK, so let's talk to that. So what is the UK government uh, trying to do to help to shore up business? Both for the employees and the yeah. employers. What I mean, and Boris Johnson has said, Boris Johnson has said, you know, Prime Minister, that you know he's going to do whatever he can financially uh, to put the UK back in the position it was before coronavirus, while it's all going on. So, for instance, um, if you're employing people, uh, he's guaranteeing eighty percent of their salary. The government is paying eighty percent of their salary. How long? Uh, not included. Not including, not including overtime, not including bonuses. Right, but just their basic wage. is going to pay them, the government are going to pay them 80% of that. And also, towards the end of last week, which is, come on, came on later, they're going to look at the self-employed people. They're going to look at their last three years' earnings, their net income. And they're also going to pay them 80% uh, of that as a lump sum for three months. They're going to pay that in June. Okay. Uh, and is, is the same time scale for the uh, employees as well? This, their 80% of their salary, will that be for three months as well? I, I think initially, yes. I think okay. that's what they're looking at initially. Obviously, they're trying to uh, uh, calculate how much they're going to put our taxes up in the future to pay this all back. Right, yeah. And I think they can afford to pay it. Yeah. But perhaps the next three months, it's not going to go on for 18 months, hopefully, right. I'm sure. Right. Um, but there are certain, you know, we don't. I normally pay a tax bill in June. I can not. I can put that back till uh, January if I want to. Uh, people pay VAT. You can not. You don't have to pay that if you don't want to. Which, which uh, is just just for our US. Just for our US uh, listeners, VAT is sales tax in essence. Yeah, and yeah, and the, the other business taxes that people are yeah. saying you don't have to pay. That there's government grants. There is uh, 0% interest loans. So it depends on the size of your business and the type of business. And they're helping out more hospitality, hospitality and leisure businesses more than other businesses, perhaps. You know, right. Because it's just, they've just shut the door. Right. 
and, and I think, that, that, sadly, it is the hospitality industry that is going to be the hardest hit because, as you um, referred to earlier on, their business is cyclical, right? So if you were going to come down here in May, June, because you're, that's when yeah. your vacation was, that's not going to come around again for another 12 months. So it isn't about exactly. every, it isn't about those businesses seeing it through the next two or three months. Some of them have got to see it through the next 12 months before the cycle. Yes, exactly. Or at least they wouldn't, earn, yeah, they wouldn't be earning any money, wouldn't be earning any money until next Easter, probably. Yeah, it's horrendous. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, yeah. So what do you what are people saying over there what what are the what do they consider to be the important things to be doing now in these challenging times in the uk what what are business owners specifically say what what what's your business community saying to you Stephen? Uh, you know we're going to be doing this we're going to be doing this we're going to be doing this what where are they I, going I, think, I think it's this thing about first of all it was a shock it happened so quickly and now people are set back at home and they can plan now for the next 90 days or how long it's going to be so i think people catching up on perhaps you know paperwork and spreadsheets and and, and all that sort of stuff that you put off to the end and hopefully they're catching up on that and also marketing and getting ready for when the doors do open and putting some sort of plan because it's going to give us some sort of breather to sit back and takes a bit of time and and you know sort of stand back and start again i think yeah i don't think yeah. anybody's going to have an excuse when we're on the other side of this to come out with that statement with, you know, when I've got some time, you know what I'd always like to get around to doing, I need to do this yeah. in my business. I'd love to do that. Well, now is the time. That time. Absolutely. Now is absolutely the time. Um, I, I, I think it's important um, like we're doing now. Um, and please, you know, share this with, with all uh, at your business, well, everybody in the UK, but you've got to stay visible. You've got to stay visible. You, you, you can't stop marketing. You've got to stay visible. You've got to, because if you're not visible now, you're going to be invisible on the other side. Uh, so I, I, that, that's where we're talking to our clients about. That's what we're encouraging everybody to do over here. Um, it has to take a different format. Uh, we're, we're doing this now, um, uh, but, but we're staying in front of people. So I think it's important that you stay in front of people and, um, that uh, you stay relevant you stay relevant what do you think is going to change after the lockdown what do you think life's going to be like on the other side because we are going to come out of it we are all we all we don't know is how long is the piece of string right i i think it depends how we come out of it are we just all going to be let loose on one day and they're going to throw the doors open and we can all run around you know, meeting our friends, going to the pub, eating in restaurants again, going to the cafe, walk along the seafront and all those sort of things. Or I don't know if we're going to be certain sectors going to be allowed out, perhaps the kids back to school first, uh, but still not allowed in groups. So I think it depends on what happens there. We've got no idea yet, I don't think, uh, what's going to happen with that. Um, I'm, I think, I'm hoping that majority of people financially are going to get through it, you know, and then, and then when they come out, I think it'll be booking holidays, perhaps in the UK, perhaps not traveling abroad quite so much because other parts of the world perhaps won't come, have come out of it at the same time. But I think people are doing, you know, a lot more traveling, booking holidays, uh, all the things they've been thinking about buying or, or, or doing when they get out. They'll have, a, they'll have a bucket list of things, I think, when they escape this lock-in. I think they'd be going mad and, uh, and, and doing that. That's what I think. Right. Well, I'm sure I'll speak for the governor of the state of Florida on this one. We want to see you guys back here as quickly as possible because Southwest, Southwest, well, the state of Florida is totally dependent on, on, uh, on tourism and the hospitality industry. So we want to yeah. see you guys back here as quickly as possible. Now, <clears throat> yeah. we were all hit with the, uh, with the, uh, the triple whammy over here and, and you were affected over there. We had the, the collapse of the stock market, it, the, the, you know, just tumbled in one day. Then we had Russia and Saudi having a go over, over oil. And then we have coronavirus. Yeah. But you guys had Brexit. Just as you can, you know, you just, got, you just got that behind you. And then you got hit with all this lot. Has there been a knock-on effect there? How's that affected you guys? We were absolutely sick every night on the news of hearing about Brexit dragging on and on and on. 
And now I have seen quite a lot of posts, you know, saying, please bring back Brexit because <laughs> it was much easier than coronavirus, you know, and, and it, it had an effect over the last couple of years for, for my business and lots of people. Perhaps they were thinking of moving house, but they weren't sure how Brexit was going to affect their income or their business or their employer. So just put that off. So everyone was putting everything off, you know. Um, so that affected quite a lot of businesses. People just didn't know what was going to happen, so just stopped doing anything. Um, and, and then we had a general election before Christmas. Oh, I forgot about that. Worked, right. That worked out well because a Conservative Boris Johnson got in, and that's good for business. A little bit perhaps like uh, Trump, you know, is it, it, good for businesses. So the stock market liked that, and lots of people uh, liked that. So that worked out well. And then, yes, we got through Brexit and we're out of the EU now. We're not part of uh, Europe anymore. Um, uh, and we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But he's definitely taken a back seat now. And it was supposed to be sorted by the end of this year. And now we've not really heard it. I think they end up putting it back a little bit because we need to negotiate some trade negotiations with every country in Europe now, you know, and actually around the world because the EU did that before for us. So we've now got to make up a separate trade deal with the US um, and the other countries. And, you know, the governments in all of those countries, because it affects the whole world, you know, I've got better things to talk about at the moment. So mm -hmm. we're not quite sure what's going to happen at the moment. Uh, but, yeah, we're definitely at the EU now. That has definitely happened. Uh, and we've got Boris Johnson for the next five years. Um, and, and we're hoping that it will, will go well. Okay. So we'll, now, you've got a strong fishing community, literally. You know, trawlers or, you know, Brixham all down there, which I'm very familiar with. I've been down there many times. Um, and I know they were not very uh, EU friendly. Uh, so they must be glad we're out of the EU. But now um, this is all hitting them. Is that starting to take effect now, being out of the EU? With all the fishing quotes, uh, we had we had fishing, but we've also got a lot of farming here, you know, yeah. in, in Devon. But I think quite a lot of, say, farmers, or perhaps not for so much fishing, but perhaps farmers had quite a lot of grants from the EU, you know. Now, I think personally, uh, we were one of the main co uh, contribu com contributors to the EU, uh, Germany, France, and the UK. So I think, you know, financially, we were better off out than we were in. So I think we'll be able to support, you know, the farmers and the fishermen will be able to decide on what they can and what can't catch and what their quotas are and where they can fish. So have more control on all of those things, which I think partly what the people voted for really is so we get control back. Um, so, uh, you know, and, you know, and the Conservative government have said, you know, they're trying to pump a lot of money in, this before coronavirus, they're going to pump a lot of money in to make sure that Brexit did work. Uh, whether they're going to have the money now to do it as much as they had before, I'm sure they won't. Uh, but, you know, that was the way they're going to do it. They were going to spend a lot of money on building new hospitals, building roads, a lot more infrastructure, just to give people jobs, really, to make sure they came through OK. Right. OK. Uh, one of the big fears over here, and I'm sure it must be the same over there, is um, how the coronavirus is going to affect the unemployment figures. I mean, the United States is, is virtually at zero unemployment. It's the lowest it's ever been. And, yes, and the same actually. There's, there's huge fears here that um, literally within months we're going to have huge unemployment numbers. Yeah, I, uh, what happened in the UK when coronavirus came in, because it was so quick really, people and businesses were letting people go and making redundancies and, and all of that. And I think the government, within a few days, really, realised that was happening and said, right, we're going to support the employers uh, to pay the employees to make sure you can... Get up. So one of their main things is a job retention scheme. They didn't want anyone to get made redundant, uh, although it did happen in the early days because businesses just couldn't... Have it. And some businesses are failing, some large high street businesses are failing now um, because they were probably on a bit of a sticky wicket before. And now it's just sort of the nail in the coffin, really. Right. Um, Right. Yeah. Well, the, the high the high street has literally been decimated. Um, the the on online, you know, our friends at Amazon and all of these online shops have have hurt. There's no doubt about it. Have hurt the, the high street. But now we've been on lockdown, and especially I would imagine um, 
in uh, in the UK literally locked down. There, there is no high street. If you've got a brick and mortar shop, you're just a ship dead floating in the water, right? Yeah, there was, you know, you see photos every day of our high streets in our cities and even in London, Trafalgar Square or wherever it is, and there's just no one about, very, very few. So no one's going to any shops. Uh, and like you're saying, a lot more people were doing online shopping anyway. And I think a lot more people will do on more online shopping now because they've had to over, you know, we actually buy our groceries online from the supermarkets and get it delivered. And now everyone is doing that. If I try to order some food today, it will come in about three weeks time because everyone is doing their food shopping online. Right. But I think people that didn't do that before, perhaps, you know, perhaps older people, uh, you know, older generation, perhaps they're going to now, they're more going to be using, you know, online purchasing for their groceries uh, and clothes, books, whatever it is. And I think this has forced people to look at that now. So I think it's going to get worse for those high street branches now than before. Right. So the, the, the whole of our infrastructure the, it, it has been affected, not just our, for want of a better word, traditional infrastructures, the highways, the roads, the high streets, but also the internet infrastructure, just coping with the sheer amount of volume that's coming on. Uh, I mean, we're on Zoom at the moment, as everybody knows. I mean, the CEO of Zoom, it must be it's like Christmas every day for him at the moment. Um, but, but, but I, even he was saying, and he's been uh, sending out notes saying, look guys, you know, we're running as fast as we can, but the sheer volume of, of zoom meetings that are going on, uh, we're, we're struggling to cope and they want to help. I, I think, I think everything's going to change. Um, the knock on effect of this is going to affect everybody. I think there's no doubt about it. It's that. going to be more of a virtual world, but I also think, that employers might realize um, how good working at home is and the flexibility that you know comes with that as well. You right. know, hot desking. So whether they'll say, right, you know, we'll have a smaller office and you know, uh, uh, part of the, you know, you work at home on Tuesday, you work at home on Wednesday and that sort of thing. I, I think more people will do that as well. More employers will start doing that because they'll perhaps realize that they don't need a big office they don't need everyone working in the same place together. They could be spread all around the world or around the country. Oh, yeah, and sure. still have meetings and still function as a business. So I think that will be another twist to it as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the call before this, I was on a, a client meeting and there were 60 people on the call. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a different skill set. It's a different management skill set to manage that conference call via the internet. But yes, and I also think, Steve, you, you've hit the nail right on the head because now people have experienced what it's like to work from home. So they're not going to be frightened they're of it forced. anymore. Yeah. They're forced to do it. Right. To do it. So now and I think when, when people come out the other side and the employer says, well, actually, it worked, right? You're right. Yeah, we don't yeah. need to pay $100,000 a year rent or £50,000 for this for this office anymore we can just carry on as we were let's just carry on and i think people will be a lot more comfortable with it because now they've tried it because one thing people hate is change right they they hate yeah change. absolutely yeah. all right okay so I, I, my next yeah my, so just gonna say my next barrel will be i see clients quite often in their own home or they come to my office yeah and what we don't do really yet you know enough of anyway is this sort of call with my clients but we're going to have to do that now so I think that will force, but it will help my clients. If I say, right, I want to do a video call with you, rather than you come into to the office or me come to visit you, we can do it on, online. I think they'll be happy with that as well, that concept. All right. Okay, Steve. Well, we've, we've, we've done the Brexit thing. We've done the coronavirus thing. I want to do a few, I want to do a few Stephen things to, to wrap things up. I've got a few questions. I've got a few curveballs I want to throw you. Right. All right. So what, number one, what's the best piece of business advice you've ever been given? Um, uh, uh, probably be your own boss uh, and don't be a 50-50 partner. Uh, because I think being a 50-50 partner where I was working then, nothing got done because one wanted to do something and the other one didn't and vice versa and nothing happened. Uh, but being the main shareholder or your own boss, 
you can go whichever direction you want. So that's all right. That. All right. Uh, give us an example of a, a misstep or a mistake you've made in your business. And if you could have your time over again, you go, wouldn't do that again. Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, that's why I get paid the big bucks, Steve, to ask these questions. Big mistakes. I, I can't think of any massive mistakes and i think you learn from the wall so perhaps you're making mistakes all the time and learning from things all the time um i i went from a job where i was very flexible working from home and then went to work for a bank uh, and that was very restrictive working nine to five in, in a bank i didn't like that at all so perhaps over time again i wouldn't have done that um but it, it served a purpose at the time so so anybody that's thinking of starting a new business now, and I personally believe this is a huge opportunity to start a new business. Yeah, absolutely. I think people be forced to do that perhaps as well. Yeah. There could be some of that. Um, where do you think they should focus the majority of their time now at the startup yeah. phase? Forget coronavirus, forget that for a second. Where, what should they focus on at the, in the initial stages? I think they've got to try and think of what life is going to be like after coronavirus and where people are going to be buying and shopping and how they are going, you know, are they going to be walking up the high street uh, uh, to, to buy their clothes and that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be a virtual world uh, going forward, uh, whether it's like this face to face or not face to face or whether it's going to be purchasing. I think it's going to change a, a, a big, massive jump if it wasn't before. I think it's going to make a big leap in that direction. Okay. We all in our, in our careers as single shingle warriors, we all, I like you work for myself. How do you work through your feelings of, of self doubt or whenever you, you know, should I, shouldn't I? Cause you're on your own, right? How do you work through that? Yeah. I think it helps to have other people around you who, you know, perhaps in a different, um, a different business, uh, but still self-employed, like we're in totally different businesses, but similar things. And you get a different perspective then as well, I think. Uh, so I work in a, a shared office with, uh, and, and there's hot desking there as well. And quite, often we bounce things around and talk about things. So I think it's talking about things and sleeping on it and having another look at it, I think. And then, uh, yeah, working out your head around that way. Okay. What book or movies had the biggest effect and beast impact on your success? Because on my success, um, I'm just trying to think. Um, now you could say mine, but I don't want to force you. That's okay. I, I, <laughs> apart from yours, Carl. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't think of movies that have affected my business or the way I run my business. Uh, and I've read, you know, various. I, I read audio books, and it's not reading; it's cheating. Yeah. But at work, I go for a walk and, and I put my headphones and I walk around the harbour at Torquay and I listen to yeah, marketing books and things like that just to give you a snippet, really. Just to but keep I'm, you an edge. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Well, as I said, as I said at the top of this interview, uh, this year you've been uh, voted and given the award of one of the top UK-rated uh, uh, financial advisors. Um, what do you attribute your success to? I think being a financial advisor, it's been very open and truthful with your clients. And I think if they don't trust you, you've got no chance whatsoever. So I think being upfront and blunt sometimes, um, I think that's really important. Uh, and you're not saying that everything's going to be fantastic. It's all going to go smoothly. You tell them like it is. And I think that's the absolutely the most important thing. Uh, sometimes people come and ask me, for something and I know really don't want that and I've got to try and steer it around and say I, I understand what you mean but let me explain this situation for you and that, uh, and would that be better for you and I think I'd take a, a longer term approach as well so I'll try and um, you know look after them for the next 10 years perhaps and not just looking at their pension now or their mortgage now or whatever it is i try and look at their bigger picture so i know what they want out of life when they're going to retire how they're going to do it and look at a bigger picture for them and i think that that helps as well. good well stephen thanks very much for your time uh, we we do appreciate it we've come to the other uh, the end of another episode of, of team of talk i want to thank stephen uh, we want to wish everybody in the uk we want them to stay home 
stay safe, be well. We want you back here in Florida, spending all your tourist money. And I promise, I promise next time I'm in the UK, I will be down in Devon spending all my uh, tourist money. If you can do something about the dollar thing, I'd really appreciate that. That would be really good. And so, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so to everybody out there, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening and stay safe, everybody. And we'll see you next time. And with that, okay, we're out. Thank stay you. Safe.